Every night they came back, and every night they were closer than before. Every time they grew in number, they became easier to make out. I could feel them watching me. I didn't know where they came from, but I knew that they wanted to hurt me. I could feel it. I saw the first one three nights ago. My house is the last one in the neighborhood, and I live alone at the end of the street. So beyond my small yard is tons of acres of undeveloped land, which mostly consists of tall pines and lots of undergrowth. The street just ends a few yards from my house, the grass and tree roots growing through the black top. All we got was an almost useless street lamp I had to petition for because the darkness of the woods creeped me out. The dull light from the street lamp illuminates a good portion of my yard, but because some of the tree limbs cast shadows across it, the light spans a few feet into the woods to the wall of my house and almost completely covers the front yard. One of the benefits of the light. Honestly, the orange glow and low lum of the lamp used to comfort me. Now it just fills me with dread. Dread for the day that it goes out and I cannot see them anymore. I was on my screened-in side porch smoking my last cigarette before going to bed. In the middle of my routine of scrolling through social media, something at the edge of the woods caught my attention. I wouldn't say I saw it at first, it was more like I felt it. I put my phone away and strained my eyes to try and make out what was making me feel so uneasy. It was just at the edge of the light, as if I had caught it trying to sneak out of the darkness beyond. A shadow in the shape of a person. I didn't believe it at first. Why would I? I was just standing there not moving. But I knew it was looking at me. It had no defining features, no eyes, no mouth, no hair. It was a perfect shadow, just standing at the edge of my yard like a person. I stared for what seemed like an eternity, not sure what I was seeing. Finally, I called out to it and asked it what it was doing. I got no response. It didn't move. I convinced myself it was just a trick of the light and I went back to scrolling. The unease continued, and occasionally I would sneak a peek back at that shadow. It never moved, never made a sound. I finished my cigarette and put it out before looking at the shadow again. It was then the wind began to blow and all the shadows from the tree limbs began moving. I watched, waiting for it to move as well. It didn't. That was the moment I began to panic. I called out to it again and again and I got no response. My stomach dropped and I began to get very angry. I stood and walked off the porch. I took maybe three or four steps towards it when I was overwhelmed with fear. I began to sweat. My mouth dried up. My hair on my body was standing on end. I tried to take another step, but my body refused to move. Every primal instinct I had was telling me to run. I backed away, never taking my eyes off it. After I got inside the house, I ran to the pantry to find my strongest flashlight. The side door of the house led to the kitchen, so it wasn't too much of a stretch. Before going back outside, I looked out the window to make sure it was still there. Of course, it hasn't moved. I walked back onto the porch, turned on the light, and aimed it at the shadow. My skin crawled as the light washed over the shadow and it didn't go away. The shadow was opaque. I could almost see through it when light was directly on it. That thing was pure darkness given shape. Not knowing what to do, I backed inside. Who could I even call about this? They would never believe this. I pulled up a chair to the window in my living room and watched the shadow. I don't know when I fell asleep but it was some time before sunrise. The next morning, I woke up to the sun blasting me in the face. I jumped up and checked the time. It was 7.36. That feeling of unease was gone, but I had to be sure. I looked out the window and almost collapsed from relief. 
the shadow was gone. I ran through the previous night's events over and over in my head. Maybe I had dreamed of the whole thing. That had to be it. Either that or I was going insane. Maybe both. It took me almost an hour to build up the courage to walk outside and inspect the spot where that shadow stood. What made my blood run cold? There were two imprints in the grass. As if something had been standing in that exact spot for hours. I felt sick to my stomach. There really was something in my yard last night. I backed away from the spot, never taking my eyes off of those footprints. It might have been there still, but invisible, waiting to get me. But if that were true, why didn't I feel that uneasiness I felt from last night? Did that even have anything to do with the shadow? I prayed I wouldn't be back to answer these questions. The rest of my day went by normally. It was my day off, so I just lounged around watching TV. I went grocery shopping and paid some bills. I don't really remember much of the day other than that. I just remember being anxious about nightfall, hoping that it wouldn't come back. God, what I would give to be able to go back to that feeling instead of that absolute dread that I feel now. Nightfall came and I did my best to keep my mind occupied. I cooked dinner, turned on one of my favorite comedies and smoked some pot. That night wore on and I began to feel a little better. It was past time the shadow appeared the night before, but I went outside to smoke a cigarette. I lit it and pulled my phone out to check the time when that feeling came back, stronger than before. I looked up and there it was, a few feet closer and more defined. I didn't have to strain so hard this time to see it. A whimper forced its way out of my mouth and I scanned that tree line. And that is when I spotted another one. It was standing just outside one of the shadows made by a tree limb closer to the road. It was standing in the same pose as the first, arms just hanging at its side. But it was facing my direction. I screamed and jumped back, falling over the chair and busting my ass. Before I realized it, I was up and yelling at them asking them what they want from me. My fear had been replaced by anger once again and I walked out onto the stoop. I looked onto the ground for something to throw and spotted a small rock by the step. Without thinking, I grabbed it and flung it at the shadow. The rock hit the shadow right in the chest and it fell to the ground, but there was no sound when it connected. It was as if it hit nothing. The shadow didn't move. I called out to it again and asked them why they were here. There was no reply, of course. I didn't know what I expected. And that is when I realized that there were no sounds, no crickets, no birds, no natural sounds at all, just the humming of the street lamp. I looked from the first shadow to the second, the unease rising the more I looked at them. I wanted them to do something, say something, anything but they just stood there watching me. I retreated to my porch and lit another cigarette. I continued to watch them until it was done. Still, they didn't move. I immediately lit another. What were these things? Why did they fill me with so much dread? I thought again about who I could tell about them that wouldn't send me to an asylum. I don't have any friends or family and they all live hours away if I did. I had never felt so alone as I did in the five minutes it took me to smoke that second cigarette. After finishing, I went back inside and posted up beside the window again. I could barely see that second shadow from my position, but as long as it didn't move, I would be fine. Hours went by and they never moved, but the uneasiness stayed. Once again, sleep crept up on me, and before I knew it, I was waking up. It was 8.42. I was late for work. I called my manager and apologized and told her I wasn't feeling well. She said it was fine and they were overstaffed anyways, to not worry about it. I asked her if she could find people to cover my shifts for the rest of the week as I wasn't feeling great and probably wouldn't be in. After a small back and forth, she agreed. I needed time to either get this thing sorted or get the hell out of Dodge. 
I spent the remainder of that day coming up with a plan for the night. I needed to get footage of them to show people. Why hadn't I done that already? I'm so stupid. But what was the plan after that? I couldn't get near them because of the feeling they gave me. I thought maybe that I could shoot them, but I didn't have the money or time to get a gun. I just reserved myself to reconnaissance for that night, and after that I'd see where things went. Waiting for nightfall was awful. I couldn't eat. I didn't smoke. I tried to take a nap because I was exhausted from barely sleeping the two previous nights. But every time I started to drift off, I would think about the shadows consumed and jump awake. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sit and wait until it got dark. The hours dragged on. The day seemed like an eternity of waiting. Finally, night came. I walked onto my porch and waited with my phone in hand, periodically checking the time. The usual sounds of nature were there, the crickets, cicadas, the odd bird. I held out for some tiny bit of hope that the shadows wouldn't show. Then, at 9.07, the sounds all stopped and all I could hear was the hum of the street lamp. My stomach dropped so bad I felt physically sick. I already knew what it meant, but I looked up anyway. The first shadow had moved a few feet closer to my house. The second one was half its distance. I scanned the yard and spotted two more. One on the opposite side of the yard is the second shadow, the other in the middle of the street. Again, they were easier to make out than the previous two nights. They were more corporeal, darker than they were before. They didn't even blend into the shadows near them anymore. If anything, they stood out. I walked to the door and stuck out my torso. The air felt heavy like it was made of pure malice. I began sweating and felt faint. Shaking it off, I opened the camera on my phone and aimed it at the first shadow, who was the closest one at probably only 20 feet from my door. I struggled to keep my hands steady enough for the camera to focus in the low light. After what seemed like forever, it finally focused, and I snapped a few pictures. Once I got those, I backed onto the porch and took a moment to catch my breath. I looked back up at those four shadows, looking for any type of change. Nothing. Simultaneously relieved and frustrated, I opened the pictures I had taken and of course they weren't clear enough to even make anything out. I had to try again, but every fiber in me was screaming not to. It took me a few minutes to hype myself up enough to open the door again, same as before. I stuck my torso out, aimed my phone at the closest shadow. It took a moment, but the camera finally focused. The picture was going to be clear. I had definitive proof that I was being haunted by shadow people. And as I pressed that button to take the picture, the street lamp flickered. It was only out for half a second, but it ruined the photo. All I got was darkness. I cursed my luck and the lamp flickered two more times as I was trying to get back to the camera. I looked up and what I saw caused me to scream, dropped my phone and fall back onto the porch in one motion. The shadows had moved. Very slightly, but they had moved. The first looked as if it had just finished taking a step forward. The second and third were in the middle of taking a step. The fourth seemed to be slightly hunched over like it was getting ready to sprint. I got off the floor with tears in my eyes and realized my phone was outside. I bolted to the door and without thinking burst onto the stoop. The phone was lying on the ground at the base of the bottom step. I reached for it when the lamp flickered again. A wave of fear hit me and I threw up before looking towards the shadows. The first had lifted its foot. The second and third finished their step and the fourth was hunched further. My body seemed to move on its own after that. I left the phone and ran inside and locked the door. I tried to figure out why the lamp was flickering. Were the shadows doing it? No. If they could do that, they would have done it in the first place. Most likely the bulb was dying. I needed to call the electric company. I reached in my pocket for the phone and screamed in frustration when it wasn't there. The lamp flickered two more times. I began to feel lightheaded. My vision blurred. I leaned against the refrigerator to steady myself, but it wasn't enough. 
My last memory from that night was falling on the floor. When I woke up, I was still on the floor. Sunlight poured through my windows. I struggled to get up and I felt weak. I didn't eat the day before and I had barely slept in days. I finally got up and looked at my stove for the time. 11.48. Christ, it was almost noon. I stumbled out onto the porch and winced as the full brightness of the sun hit me. I walked out the door to the stoop and picked up the phone. It was busted to all hell. I sat on the step and cried. These things were going to kill me and I knew it. I ran through my options. I couldn't just up and move. I could stay at my parents for maybe a night or two, but eventually I would have to come back home. How many would be here then? I decided that I was going to fight them. This was my home. As long as there was light touching them, they wouldn't move. I could just buy a bow and take them out on the front porch. I hadn't used one since I was a kid, but I was pretty decent back then, so I had a good feeling. First thing I needed to do was get that light replaced, though. I drove down to the electric company and told them the light was out and it needed to be fixed as soon as possible. They told me it would be later in the afternoon, but it would be fixed before dark. I thanked them and drove them immediately to the nearest sporting goods store. Once there, I asked an employee to show me the bows. I was a little hurt by some of the prices of these things and finally I settled on one in my price range and stocked up on arrows with some gnarly heads. On the way home, I stopped by a drive through I didn't eat much. When I got home, I began putting the arrows together and practicing drawing the bow. I felt pretty confident in my abilities, even though it made me sore as hell. At about four in the afternoon, the repair truck finally came out and I walked out to meet the guy. He told me I looked sick, which I laughed off as having the week off and partying a little too hard. We had a laugh and then he went to work. Once he was done, we made some more small talk and he asked me if I was ready for the big storm that is coming through later. My heart dropped when I told him I didn't even know it was coming. He pointed up and the sky was extremely overcast and I cursed myself as I realized that had been all day. I thanked him when he left. I hauled ass back to the sporting goods store. I ran to that hunting section and I bought the brightest battery operated spotlight and headlamp they had between the bow and these. I almost wiped my account, but I wasn't going to take the chance of those things coming to get me. I could always make the money back. As I walked out of the store, the first few raindrops began falling. By the time I got back home, the storm was in full swing. The wind was killer, whipping the rain sideways so hard it stung. In the short distance from my car to my house, I was completely soaked. Once inside, I grabbed my flashlight and set it up facing the middle of the kitchen floor. If things got bad and they got into the house, I could turn it on and slow them down, if not stop them outright. I set up the spotlight in the living room just in case the flashlight didn't stop them. All I could do after that was wait. So I sat, smoking a cigarette on the porch, waiting for them to show. I was wearing the headlamp and I couldn't take any chances. It was 10.52 and they had yet to make an appearance. Maybe they don't like the rain either, I thought. There had been a few lightning strikes in the last hour and they seemed to be getting closer. They finally showed up. I could feel them. The pressure, the dread, it was worse than ever. I looked out into the yard and spotted them. The first was only about 10 feet away now, with four not far from it, approaching from the side. Two and three were about twenty feet away, as if they were in no hurry. I scanned the rest of the yard, and I spotted four more. Two were at the edge of the tree line, and one was directly below the street lamp, and the last was standing where number four originally stood. There were eight of them. I didn't expect this many, but there was nothing I could do about it. I grabbed the bow and walked to the door of the porch. It took everything to convince myself to open it. Lightning struck and that got me moving. In one swift motion, I kicked open the door, drew the bow, and I aimed for the first shadow. I let loose the arrow. I missed. Of course I missed. I hadn't shot one of these things in almost 20 years. I was an idiot for thinking I could go full-on Rambo. The thunder finally hit and rumbled my bones. 
It was almost deafening. I shook it off and drew another arrow. I took a deep breath and aimed, trying to compose myself. I loosed the arrow and it hit the shadow in the hip. It didn't even react. The pressure grew, my head starting to hurt and I felt nauseous. Lightning struck again and my worst fear happened. The street lamp went out. I fell back a few steps in the darkness and reached to turn on my headlamp, but didn't manage to before the light came back on. The light was only out for two, maybe three seconds, but it felt like an eternity. It came back on as a thunder clapped so hard the windows of my house rattled. I quickly assessed the situation. Shadow 1 had pulled out the arrow that was holding it at its side. 2 and 3 were now facing 1. 4 looked like it was in a mad sprint to the door, only about 8 feet away now. 5 and 6 were hunched like they were about to start running. 7 hadn't moved, and 8 had only taken a step, maybe 2. I steeled myself and decided 4 was the most immediate threat. I notched another arrow, opened the door, and aimed for its chest. I loosed the arrow and it hit it right in the throat. The shadow didn't react, but the pressure grew. I felt something on my lip as I reached up to feel. I pulled back my hand and my fingertips were covered in blood. I had a nosebleed. The pressure was so great it caused my nose to bleed. There's no time to worry about that. I notched another arrow and took aim at four again. Lightning flashed as I loosed it, causing me to miss horribly. The street lamp went out again, but only for a second. Four was already reaching for the arrow in its throat. Thunder clapped and the lamp went out once again, as did every light in my house. I immediately turned on my headlamp and looked at Four. It was in the process of removing the arrow. I looked around to the others as fast as I could. They were all in various phases of movement. I had to be fast. I didn't know when the street lamp was coming on again, if at all. I knocked another arrow and aimed for four when the thunder clapped, startling me, causing me to drop the arrow. I heard a ripping sound to my right. I looked and caught seven frozen in time, tearing through my screen. I looked back towards four and my heart sank. He was four feet away, reaching for me. I jumped back, slamming the flimsy door. I hooked the latch and backed up to the kitchen, more ripping to my right. I swung around and saw seven halfway inside, with eight standing right beside it. Then something slammed into the door. I can only assume it was the fourth shadow. I turned to see it pressed against the glass like a child looking into a candy store. Even though there were no facial features, I swear it was smiling at me. Lightning flashed and I saw the rest of them were crowded around, not too far behind it. I fell back into the kitchen and turned on the flashlight. Thunder boomed, shaking the house again. The light illuminated the entire kitchen in a soft LED glow. I heard the latch rip from the door frame. They were on the porch now. For some reason, I expected to hear footsteps, but there were none. They started banging on my kitchen door and the windows next to it. The door handle started turning slowly. My heart dropped. I was in such a hurry to turn on the flashlight I didn't lock the door. I ran over and was reaching for the deadbolt when the window beside the door exploded, knocking me back for a moment. That's all they needed. The kitchen door flew open and I could see at least five of them gathered behind the fourth. They weren't coming in or moving, which was promising. The flashlight was doing its job. I relaxed a bit, but only for a moment. The doorway was only about five feet away, and they were easy targets. I notched an arrow, drew the bow, and loosed the arrow right at Four's face. I missed, but I hit one of the shadows behind it. I'll take it, I thought. I was reaching for another arrow when something flew through the broken window and knocked the flashlight over. The light was now pointed down the hallway away from the door, causing darkness behind it. I looked to see what happened and saw one of my arrows laying next to the flashlight. I looked up in horror and caught four in the process of crossing the threshold of my door. 
Instinctively, I turned and ran to the living room. I should be okay in here, I thought. They had to get past the flashlight blasting down the hallway to get me. I walked to the couch where I left the bulk of the arrows. I grabbed them and shoved them into the quiver as lightning struck once again. I stopped what I was doing because something outside caught my eye. Thunder clapped, and I looked towards the window. I didn't have time to look out because I heard the distinctive click of a button and the light down the hallway went out. Fuck. I whipped around and saw one of the hands of the threshold on the doorway to the living room already. Without shifting my gaze, I walked to the spotlight, crouched down, and pressed the button to turn it on. Nothing happened. In the panic, I looked down at it. I quickly looked back up and one of their heads was peering around the corner. It felt like it was mocking me. I reached down to pick up the light and immediately realized my mistake. I didn't buy any batteries. Fear set in. True fear. I was going to die here because I didn't buy batteries for a battery-operated spotlight. Honestly, I probably deserved for that. No. I was getting out of here, I thought. I drew the bow and fired an arrow at the shadow's head. I missed, but the arrow lodged itself into the hand of the wood of the doorframe. That would help buy me some time. I launched another arrow and back towards the front of the house. I fumbled to find the deadbolt with my free hand, and without thinking I looked down quickly. When I looked back, two more heads were peering around the corner at me. I finally got the door unlocked and opened it, never taking my eyes off of those shadows in the hallway. I got the door open a little bit, squeezing through without turning around. I took a deep breath and turned to run, closing the door behind me. I was about to run down the steps when lightning flashed and I stopped cold. In my front yard stood thirteen shadows. I couldn't get a good count initially, but I started scanning the yard with my headlamp and counted them all quickly. Thirteen. Had there been this many this entire time, I never even thought about the possibility that there could have been more than what was in my side yard. I didn't have time to think of a plan. The door behind me slowly started opening. I dropped the bow and turned to grab the doorknob to keep it closed, while turning my head to try to keep some light on the shadows behind me. They were strong. It took everything I had to keep them from ripping the door out of my hands. The shadows in the yard were steadily creeping closer, because I couldn't keep the light on them for more than a second or two. I could feel my nosebleed getting worse. My head was killing me. I felt nauseous and I was losing my strength. The door was suddenly ripped from my hands and I stumbled back, my balance thrown off. I fell down the steps and landed hard on my back. I couldn't breathe for a moment. I looked down around me and screamed. They were closing in. I had to run as soon as I got outside. I probably could have found an exit and made it. Stupid. I turned back to the house and there was a shadow halfway down the steps. I looked again and they were closer. I looked back to the steps and the shadow was reaching for me. I closed my eyes. This was it. No matter what I did, one of them would get me. The attack never came. I was too scared to open my eyes and I just laid on the ground for what seemed like forever. Then I heard it. A low hum. I opened my eyes and started to cry. The street lamp was back on. My house lights were back on. I had power again. Even the rain was beginning to slack off. The shadow directly over me was frozen, its hand only inches away from my face. I scooted back and stood. I could feel the hatred coming from this thing. I looked in my house and there were six in the living room. The thirteen in my front yard were just standing in a loose circle around where I fell. It's like they were going to watch this one in front of me get me. I felt slightly relieved even though the pressure and dread were still weighing on me. I decided I was going to stay somewhere else tonight. Anywhere else. I reached in my pocket for my keys and of course they weren't there. I'm pretty sure that I left them in my bedroom. Awesome. I managed to squeeze past the circle of shadows and walk around the house since I wasn't making it through the front door. I looked at the number they did to my screen around the porch and a shiver ran down my spine. 
what would have happened to me if they caught me. Walking back to my bedroom, I felt good. I won. I am definitely moving out tomorrow, I thought, but that's a small price to pay. Walking past the doorway to the living room, I looked in at them, frozen, trying to get out the front door to get me. In my rush, I clipped the door frame on the living room with the headlamp, knocking it off my head. I didn't stop to pick it up. I don't have time. I had to get out of here. As I walked into my bedroom, I reached to turn the light on and immediately realized something was wrong. The light switch was off. That wasn't right. I had intentionally left every light on in the house earlier. Before I could even react, something ice cold grabbed my wrist and I was flung into the darkness on the other side of the room. I tried to stand but I was pushed onto the floor. My wrist started to burn. It was so cold. Screaming, I turned around to swing at my assailant. I connected with nothing and pain shot up my arm. My throat went cold, and I was lifted off to the ground and slammed into the wall. I couldn't breathe. I kicked my legs to try and force the shadow to loosen its grip, but I had no luck. I began lashing out, trying to hurt it. I only succeeded in hurting myself. It felt like I was hitting a solid wall. Finally, in a last-ditch effort, I reached into my pocket and pulled out my lighter. I tried to light it, but I was losing consciousness. It finally catches and the small flame illuminated the darkness around me and that shadow. It stops the assault and surprisingly loosens its grip around my throat a little. I tried to move as slowly as possible to not put out the flame. I reached up with my left hand and grabbed the shadow's forearm. I slowly started to try to pull its hand off my throat. The flame flickered as I exhaled and I tried not to panic. It stayed lit. I was good. The hand started to come off my throat as I pulled at the forearm. I felt its fingertips on the back of my neck lift ever so slightly and the hand came off suddenly. The motion caused my entire weight to shift and the flame went out. My head slammed into the wall before I had the chance to try to relight it, the right hand closing around my neck. I felt the knives stabbing me. It was so cold. The shadow slammed me into the wall again and I dropped the lighter. It slammed me again and my head went through the sheet rock, my vision fading. I struggled against it, but it was really like a toddler fighting off a grown man. My head hit the wall again, on a stud this time and I could feel the blood gushing from the back of my head. I got slammed again, and I knew it would be the end, but I was okay with it. Dying didn't seem so bad anymore. The shadow pulled back, and it feels like it knows this will be the last hit as well. It paused and seemed to be savoring the moment. I smiled and a small chuckle escaped me, using the last bit of energy I had who would have thought that I'd be murdered by a shadow? The chuckle must have pissed it off. It slammed my head into the wall harder than all of the other times. I heard a crack. I assumed it was my skull, but it didn't matter. I let myself be consumed by that dark oblivion of death. It felt comforting. All this time I had been avoiding the dark. If only I had known it would feel this good, this peaceful. I would have run towards it.